Welcome back. Uh, so I spectated a game just yesterday, watching a VOD. Um, I tend to skip from part to part in the VOD just because games can take a minute to play out, and some games catch my attention more than others. I promise I'm not bullying. I promise I'm just trying to help the community and myself come to a better understanding of, like, are shogi proverbs useful? I had a failed recording here because I forgot I had my mic muted. So we'll encounter some analysis along the way that I've just come up with a minute ago. Uh, I'm not using an engine, although I have looked at an engine's evaluation of this game and looked at a graph, but haven't looked too deeply. And just want to give like my impressions based on um, the engine evaluations that reinforced my interpretation of what was going on and see if I can get any shogi proverbs to stick with what I'm looking at, too. Um, I'm not really an opening expert, so I'm not going to pretend to be one. I think both players played reasonably here. I think this is a reasonable, quite even position between both players. I think this is the easiest way to collect the pawn. However, I assume Gota gets initiative of some uh, form here somehow. And yes, yeah, Santa makes a very astute calculation. And Gota is just like uh, gone a bit mad, a bit sacrifice happy. But at an amateur level, basically anything you can play is possible. Um, you can get away with a lot, or at least I can. So. Yeah, we got a sharp position here. Uh, both players have built a castle. So Zenta's built half Mino Castle down here. And Gota has built Boat Castle. Although it's a bit different than I remember it, but again, whatever. Both players did build a castle, so that's good. Both players are trying to attack, although we've put a pawn in the way of our rook. But we were kind of forced to do that. And here we have a rook um, attacking all by itself. And so one may question, how do you learn shogi proverbs or how do they apply to games? Um, well, let's take a look at this position. So there's a proverb that um, an attack supported by four pieces will never run out. Well, we got one piece attacking. That's not four pieces. This is not something I'm too afraid of. Although, yeah, if the rook invaded... Oh, there's another proverb. Um, if an opponent has pieces hanging, you will never be lost looking for a move. Uh, conversely, if you build a castle, and if all of your pieces defend each other really nicely, it's like there you have a mutual defense, here you have a mutual defense... The only hanging piece here is the rook. So, um, yeah, this is actually quite solid. Uh, I'm trying to remember the word Shogi Harbor gave for this kind of shape of generals mutually defending each other. But one of our videos does touch on this a little bit. Um, but regardless, all the points of entry are blocked here. So this rook's not promoting, and even if it did promote... It's just one piece all by itself. Yes, arguably a knight could somehow participate in an attack, but it's not so worrying, because there's only one piece hanging, or one loose piece. Everything else is mutually defended. This is a nice, solid shape. Um, apparently, earlier as I was looking at this, I got carried away looking at a variation. Or um, Maybe this wasn't even me, but somebody else spectating the game might have added that. I don't recall, but anyway, I would have been impressed to see the silver run up the board, even giving us time to like drop our bishops in the corner and start mopping up pieces and use those pieces to attack this somehow, while this rook is just offsides doing its own thing. Um, that's not what happened. Instead, this bishop did get dropped here. Uh, there's another proverb that a promoted bishop that is a horse in defense is worth three generals. 
Um, so I'd be inclined to try to promote this way and just have a horse in defense and then use all the rest of my pieces somehow to attack something. Uh, I was about to say, incidentally, that protects against the fork that does happen here. But I'm not sure if dropping the bishop actually would protect against this all tactics considered. Maybe it does. I don't know. Um, but regardless, we've unfortunately, uh, we're in a fork. There's a proverb that says, don't run from a fork. I don't remember if an explanation is offered with the proverb, but I think the notion is that, hey, if you're going to lose material, don't also lose time while losing material. But that's exactly what happens here, is that Senta loses a move. And then has to spend another move recapturing here. And so uh, Gota is still with initiative here. Uh, despite having done the fork, which should have spent a turn up. That's now Gota's turn again. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to figure out, like, can Proverbs help us figure out what's going on in the game? Um, yeah, this is a brilliant little tactic here that just prevents the bishop from invading. Uh, since we don't have four pieces attacking, yeah, our attack is just kind of doomed to run back here. So, um, it's good that we're trying to open the line for the rook. If this could promote and get out of the way, that'd be ideal. Likewise, our bishop's kind of blocked up here. Um, which further brings into question the bishop drop in the first place, but it's too late now. Here we continue trapping our own bishop. I don't know what to say. Um... Yeah, as I was commenting this a moment ago, um, there's another proverb that drop where your opponent wants to drop. Um, once we hit this position, there's nowhere to drop the bishop anymore. So the opponent has successfully dropped where we want to drop. Conversely, back here. This is like our last chance to use this bishop. And the opponent has a bit of a difficult position here. Yeah, neither player's really attacking heavily. Um, Gota's going to lose a little bit of material, but maybe they'll find an attack somewhere else to make up for it. Instead, we hit this kind of deadlock. And it's not really clear how to proceed. And I was... In the moment that this move got played during the actual game, I was impressed by it. During this post-game analysis, uh... I think I've gotten far more confused by this move than anything else in the game. Because I want to like the move, but also it makes a target for the opponent. And the knight can't even advance here. It's kind of like how our bishop's cut off by our pieces, our rook's cut off by our piece. The knight's cut off because the opponent has these squares defended, so... It'd be one thing if we were straight up winning the rook, but we don't win the rook. We did win a pawn. It's better than nothing, and I don't know like, if Senta had better here than that, or if that was the best Senta could have gotten. But in what follows here, I just really struggled to keep up with it all. It makes sense like if you're under pressure to start exchanging because uh, you saw a clear continuation. The opponent walked into this fork, which um, I guess they pity them for it. Uh, maybe there's some trick here that they were defending against. I don't know. Oops. Uh, I tried to promote that. I don't know why the interface did this thing, but yeah. Maybe this is what the opponent had in mind, and they saw this as invading, and Instead, they decided to, like, walk into this fork. But more likely, this is just Shogi Wars and the chaos that can happen in time pressure. Um, so, yeah. Now this knight's hanging. Well, the opponent found this move, which is really clever. 
And I was thinking, gosh, wouldn't it be so much more clever? Yes, this promoted bish or this promoted silver is hanging, but other stuff can be hanging too. This looks really clever to me in retrospect. Uh, I don't know how the opponent would deal with it. For example, if you advance the rook, the rook becomes a target and doesn't have the square to go to. So that's kind of out. I don't know how Santa deals with this. Um, maybe they go here. But yeah, this promoted silver is hanging, but this promoted silver is also hanging. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Hard to say. Um, I mean, if you compare this with the game line where they hit a silver drop to cut off the rook and the rook can't promote, like this is a different position, with a different character. And here the rook does to get to promote, so. Well, does it? I'm not so sure. Uh, hmm. Does this rook get to promote? Seemingly so. Um, you might ask, why am I not like moving this promoted silver away and then making time? I mean, you could do that too. We still have time to push this. The opponent doesn't have an attack here. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The opponent did not run from the fork. We'll give them credit for that. This was a fork here. Uh, I mean, the rook's hanging, so we had to move the rook. The fact that the pawn's hanging doesn't... It's not the same kind of fork as every other fork we've been looking at. And yeah, before in my failed recording, I was looking at variations here, trying to figure out, like, is there some way that uh, Gota can be clever about this? But I'm not sure that Gota can be so clever here. Um, it's just a tough position. Yeah. Like, everything's... well... That's so messy. They could give up the horse. Yeah. Wow, what's with my accent? Why do I have a Midwest accent? <laughs> they can give up the horse. Um, so... Yeah, that's complicated. I was surprised to see the silver drop because now this promoted silver is super distant from this castle, even more distant from the king. Welcome. So, I don't know. This game had me so confused. I wasn't expect, even though a promoted rook is kind of spooky, I guess uh, Gota did the right thing. The promoted rook is too spooky here. Um... But it's really hard, since both players have so many things loose or hanging or easy to attack, it's hard to, like, um, find variations. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Was there any opportunity for... Like, so here, um, go to taking the promoted silver allows this attack to speed up. And beforehand, yeah, I was remarking about this line, but it's no good on account of this horse being attacked. Uh, could do this retreat, but, hmm. So, if that's no good, maybe I've been looking at this all in some mistaken way, but yeah, walking into the fork hurt a lot. Uh, maybe this fixation on don't run from a fork might be the wrong fixation here. 
this piece is loose. This is perhaps the opportunity to attack in this position. Uh, normally you don't look at a gold moving this far up the board, but, um, well, this seems like if there's any timing for that, this would be the timing for it. Yes, if the silver were in hand, the silver could be dropped here and this gold would be lost. Yeah, it's pretty messy, but, um, hmm. Now if we defend the knight, this slows this is a mess the rook's imp going to promote imminently and so this running away that way is not going to help um yeah there's no time to defend the knight this way because this is hanging consequently defending the knight is out so this promotion happens um but now this piece is marooned on this side of the board. Meanwhile, the stuff is... I don't know. And then there's a bishop drop, and I don't know. There's also this bishop drop still. It's complicated. Um, but I guess the underlying proverbs are... One, an attack with four pieces will not run out. And two, if the opponent is hanging or has loose pieces, you won't be lost looking for a move. Um, both players are going to have a good time finding many exciting moves in this position. I have no idea how to evaluate this, but other than to say it looks exciting. So that was one way this could have gone. Instead, go to um, does successfully cut off the rook, but um, let's see what was it here. Was well, my conclusion that I don't want to take the knight, or was it that like I want to retreat or want to run away? Because like there's so many things hanging. I think this is where I got to at the end of my failed recording. Um, and concluded that, yeah, we could lose a pawn, but then this fork happens, and we have an amazing initiative to follow this. And that's in spite of this bishop kind of being marooned out here. Uh, Gota has only used their rook to attack, and this promoted silver out here. Gota needs a lot more attacking force to make anything happen in this position. If they had a bishop to put on this diagonal, this would be much more severe. But the bishop was invested down here to trap the rook. So, uh, anyway. Um, Sasenta took a knight. Gota took a silver. And this got really complicated again uh whereas ironically this knight just like not having anywhere to go this looks pretty difficult for gota um maybe they have to attack this way with the still hanging maybe this makes me look like an idiot probably it does um I don't have a follow-up, do I? Nope. <laughs> so my silver advance lacks a follow-up, so... Yeah, I guess Santa did the right thing. Uh, take here, take there. And this is just a difficult position. There's not an easy answer here. I wanted there to be one. I think the answer is like these pieces are awkwardly placed these pieces are not the easiest to use but also gota doesn't have much of an attack going either so it's just awkward um so yeah senta spots this tactic this tactic 
and then that happens. Hmm. We give the general in hand to go to... Who drops it immediately? I wonder about all this. I didn't think much about this when viewing the game, but like the general blocks uh, the bishop. So maybe this could be awkward. On the other hand, the gold supports an attack on this square. Everything about this is awkward for both players. Uh, is there any <laughs> any way to get out of all this awkwardness? <laughs> Bite the bullet. There we go. Yeah, just bonsai here. Yeah, that's the answer. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, we protect this general while also running away from the attack. While also maybe threatening to trap this somehow. If we had another gold in hand, this would be so much easier. But maybe there is a threat to do something like this. But that's probably not where we want the rook. Um... Really, probably what we're actually threat. No, we don't have a bishop to hit down this diagonal. Everything about this is so special. Um, yes, the opponent running away might have been the mistake here. Perhaps every move other than running away. Well, no. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, this would have been okay. As opposed to that. You could always do this later. Um, yeah, there could be this bishop exchange. I don't know. Let's look at the actual game. So, there's this check. That's smart. Um, there's that exchange, which really caught me by surprise. Um... We had an opportunity to win material and continue attacking. Instead, we can choose to just simply continue attacking. With, but no, it's fine. This is fine. Um, Gota's getting many pieces in hand, and they see this opportunity to no longer rely on having so many pieces in hand. Um, gold general drop looks scary. Is it scary? Um, what happens if we just ignore it? Oh, the rook hangs. <laughs> we know the rook defends that, but we, no. Okay, that's funny. The rook defends this, and if you try to do that, you can defend the rook too. Uh, so this is, might be a move. That's awkward. Hmm. Does that mean some drop on 3-3 maybe has some merit? Um. <sighs> There's a saying that an attack with four pieces will never run out. But... We're not going to have four pieces here for much longer. <laughs> um, maybe the real problem is that uh, they pick up this piece, and this piece joins the attack in this really weird position. Again, this rook shouldn't even be here. Uh, so, okay, why am I trying to run the rook away? Because I like my rook. But no, this is the right move. I'm being silly. Yeah, of course this is the right move. Uh, Gota has won a piece. Yeah, we drop a gold, and so we take a horse, and then we take a gold. Gota wins a piece in this variation. And, yeah, time pressure makes fools of us all. Unfortunately, this attack just isn't quite enough. It's No, the silver drop is excellent, actually. This attack... 
has gained a lot of fuel quite suddenly. Uh, go to... I don't know. Just never had an attack this game and still doesn't. Um, but they do play some decent looking defensive moves. Yeah, this is exactly how I would have tried to continue the attack here. And then I would have played this way. I don't know if this is right. It feels awkward because the king runs up. Um, and so many Suma, this sort of line works, but here maybe it doesn't. And I don't see... How would you continue this? Do we need to do silver takes? Yes? No? Uh, when I was saying yes, it was necessary, it's because I was looking at this. I'm about to remark on how the attack is completely dead here. But the attack is not completely dead here. So gold takes might be possible. Even though that's... Well, in fact, if it's possible, that's got to be the move, right? Because um, now there's this threat and a drop mate. So this forces more or less gold takes, gold takes, king takes. And then from here, is there something? Like this bishop cuts right into the head of the attack. So there's not going to be an instant mate. But... Uh, it's a pity. This is so close. This is so much closer than I'd have expected anything to be. And if they move the king onto the edge file, you just push the edge pawn. Um, but if the king moves here, then you drop a gold? Uh, having to invest another piece in the attack... Yeah, it's not going to prevail. But how do you continue attacking here? All the pieces have run out. Well, okay, I was remarking how this attack suddenly gained a lot of steam. Um, and how I would have continued by taking the knight and hoping that there were some chances here. Um, which might still be the pragmatic thing to do, whether, well, my first thought was silver takes, uh, leaving all the rest of the generals supporting this attack as it stands. Uh, if the king runs, since we can't block with anything else, we block with this. Bishop runs somewhere. Like, this is slow, but... It's an attack. Is it going to mate? Probably not. Actually, so why bring that over when we can do this instead and have this join? Hmm. Might not matter. Um. Hmm. I don't know. So the silver drop looked really powerful, but maybe it's not. And if the silver drop is not that powerful, then this whole attack is not that powerful. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Um, in which case, you just take this instead. This runs away. Take this, I guess. I don't know. Eventually you get to push this. It's still not enough. So, yeah, the opponent is trying to play to force Senta to lose on time. Welcome. So where is the nice, sharp tactic to, like, reinvigorate this failed attack? Well, we gave up a piece here. That was the problem. Um... And then we doubled down on giving up the piece instead of giving up an exchange by just taking the rook. 
As much as I like having it, well, we still don't have enough force either way here. Um, yeah, so the conclusion of all this uh, rambling is that even, yeah, no, taking the silver here was the fatal mistake. And you need to take this and just pray that you can survive the opponent's attack long enough to bring in reinforcements. That's the conclusion. So, yeah, if you practice tons and tons of Suma Shogi, you'll eventually get the hang of, like, what is a checkmate and what's not a checkmate. When Santa takes here, my immediate reaction was, gosh, I hope they see more than I'm seeing. Because I do not see a checkmate here. And then over the next few moves, like, I mean, yeah, maybe arguably Silver Drop. No, I don't know. Over these moves, it became evident that, whether it was clear or not, it became evident that this attack is just not enough. Um, so I'm not saying it was easy to spot, but boy, I mean, yeah, they were in time pressure, but um, I think this is the way to go about it. And yes, it's a bit slower because we've just blocked our bishop or our horse. Yeah, it takes some time to unwind this ungodly mess. However, um, we have a castle. The opponent's attack is quite distant from the castle. And the opponent has no gold. Um, I don't remember if there's a proverb about gold being valuable in the castle, aside from talking about Anaguma Castle. But here, I guess it would maybe promoted silver to 3-2 is playable next. Maybe. Um, promoted silver to 3-2. I'm not understanding the suggestion somehow. I'm sorry. Uh, are we talking about this position or a different position? Are we talking about this after move 105, gold takes 4-2? Are we talking about the main game line with gold takes here or something else? We're talking about gold takes 4-2. Um, sorry, we're talking about gold takes 4-2 here. Promoted silver, 3-2. I'm not seeing... Maybe we're talking... I don't know what we're talking about. Um, we have a horse here. Uh, we have two golds in hand. Uh, we have a promoted knight join the attack pretty soon here. I think if we just took the piece and I had like three pieces plus two more supporting this, I think this would have been a very strong attack. There might not have been enough time on the clock to be able to checkmate before Shogi Wars declares the game victorious for Gota, but I think this is how I would have approached this. Um, conversely, in the game, Santa just lost too many pieces. They didn't have four pieces attacking. They had like one or two, and those quickly got exchanged off. Um... Because if we take, yeah, um, I, I'm not seeing, maybe you're talking about silver drop 3-2? I don't know. To try to stave off this knight advance, which it doesn't stop, actually. I'm not sure what we're referring to. Sorry. Apologies, I'm not being ignorant on purpose, I just don't understand. Um, 
I guess there might be a thought of taking the gold and then dropping another silver or something. Um, but yeah, I think this taking a free piece and continuing to break down the castle would have taken slightly longer in terms of the number of turns. But uh, the result that happened in the game forced all the pieces off the board, and now suddenly Santa does not have four pieces attacking. Santa has zero pieces attacking. So that just didn't work out. So yeah, that's um, why I'm suggesting this gold takes here. Uh, kind of being the pinnacle of the attack and that everything hinges on it. Um, so with that said, <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Um, so that said, that makes this gold drop a mistake, doesn't it? And this is the refutation of the mistake. Um, because if they continue to try to defend this gold here, then there's check and checkmate. Um, so... Yeah, the king can't defend this gold general floating out here. So this gold drop wins the piece on 4-2 that just got dropped on 4-2. So go to, in their anxiety and trying to push the opponent over on the clock, made this colossal blunder of gold drop 4-2, where just running away um, might have saved them. Uh... And maybe there's some chances for counterattack out here that I'm completely missing, too. Like, maybe there's some brilliant counterattack that just, like, makes this attack look silly. I don't know. Yeah, Sente's going to play this anyway. And, I don't know, support the castle somehow. It's going to be messy. And this is... Surely going to hold out long enough. So, something like that might have been fine for Gota. Instead, Gota kind of walks into it. Oh, sorry. Uh, we'll get back to the variation we we're just looking at. If I can find it. Bishop 3 1 now. Does force this move, because if we take the bishop, or if we take the horse, there's gold drop mate. Okay, and if we don't take, um, yeah, we can have this capture. And this has many threats. Uh, that looks pretty devastating. Yeah. Okay, that looks decisive. Yes. So, horse 3-1 refutes this rook drop uh yeah the rook drops too late here wow that kind of hurts so while in many positions that might be an appropriate idea here that defense is not in fact appropriate goto would have to find some other defense in this case or just find some counter attack uh goodness. It's not easy. Um, yeah, I could... I'm starting to understand what you were talking about by way of analogy. Um, so this horse advance looks pretty spooky. Maybe this running away... Oh, that just invites more tactics. Never mind. Uh, or, yeah, even this capture. Um, uh, I don't know if Gota can easily survive this. It's kind of a mess. Hmm. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I'm just bad at Suma Shogi. Yeah, you're exactly right. So we actually do need to defend against that. Um, 
I don't know whether Silver Drop 4-1 or Gold Drop 4-1 might be a better attempt to defend against that. In general, you'd like to drop the Rook right about here, but there's a Pawn in the way. Um, so you can't do that. Um, unless you're super sneaky. So maybe this is the right idea. And... It's so complicated. I don't know. It's kind of a mess. Um, hmm. Glad I'm not playing that side of this position. So, yeah, I was going to remark that escaping the king is such a clear defense that easily prevents everything here, but Senta actually does still have initiative, even if Gota runs the king away. Um, hmm. What to do? <laughs> what a mess. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you start with this, and then you try to work this in next. And maybe go to survives this long enough to build up an attack. Maybe. Um, either way, this offers chances. Whereas um, what go to walked into where they just are giving up a piece, but Senta didn't take the piece. Um, this looks over because there are five pieces attacking. Uh, but in the game. We thought we spotted a mate. There wasn't a mate. Instead, we lost all of our pieces. And that's just time pressure and how it goes. Time pressure can be like that on Shogi Wars. It kind of sucks. Yeah. I can't criticize it too much. I can criticize the opponent who had, like, over two minutes left for making moves which throw the game. Um, that that might not have been the right idea. But... The game went till a move 138 here. 50-something moves... I'm sorry. Like, move 60-ish out here. Um, this... There were like 60 moves where Senta had a chance to launch an attack. And eventually he got around to launching one. Um, but it's so much easier to play the game if you can, like, seize the moment. So, there's the moment. Okay. But also, there's the moment. Also, there's probably some other chances out here. Uh, I do like this. This does seize the moment. It may or may not work, but golly, it made the opponent sweat a whole ton. So, I admire it. It does help that the opponent walked straight into this, um, as many opponents do unfortunately for them. Um, in a more serious game, hopefully the opponent would have spotted this. And yeah, I still can't criticize giving up like a material exchange. A bishop for a general is not the end of the world. As long as you got a plan, as long as you got some kind of something going... That's far better than just drifting endlessly. So, um, they say that about endgames, that, like, a long mate, as long as it's, you know, going to work, is much better than a short mate that you can't find. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of proverbs to consider. The more I talk, the dumber I sound, so maybe I shouldn't talk as much. Um, oh, but yeah, I guess another proverb out here, if the opponent has a hanging piece, you won't be lost looking for a move. And so the opponent has a rook here, yeah, it's not hanging, here it is hanging, it's a rook, it doesn't matter if it's hanging or not, as long as you can hit it. Um, but we kind of force the opponent to defend their rook, and it's out of arm's reach now. 
So, like, it's... If we're forcing the opponent to defend their pieces, and if we're running from a fork, we're just giving up initiative time and time again. It's just... It's difficult to come up with original ideas that win the game. So... I guess it helps to review other people's games. Um, not saying that as me reviewing this game, but I'm saying like uh, if you're looking for ideas as to how to play and seize the initiative and stuff, it can help to look at pro um, like Morinaka's games um, that he plays on YouTube. Or I'm sorry, I'm blanking. There's several other pros that have done lectures as well as games on YouTube. Um, yeah, uh, there's Pro uh, Yamaguchi Eriko. There's um, yeah, Eitan Muranaka. There's just so many cool games out there to spectate, and these pros. Oh yeah, Kagawa. I'm sorry, I missed the mo name you just typed out there. I don't want to mispronounce it. But there's so many good pros out there sharing their games and commenting and like helping you see, hey, try this, try that, and explaining here's how you can think about a position so you don't have to come up with everything on your own. So, yeah, I would recommend taking a look at some of that. Um... Because opening study, while it's exciting, it's only going to get you so far. And like once you're out of the opening, what do you do? Most of the game is beyond the opening phase. And so it helps to have looked at ideas for the rest of the game. Sorry, I don't mean to be mean. Um, I'm just... I kind of wish that the West had the same kind of... Um, or had some kind of institution of learning for this game. Uh, Shogi Harvest done a wonderful job bringing a community together, and I'd like to see just whatever it is that the West has continue to grow and learn and teach the game. It's a delightful game. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll leave it there. So, hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.